We're at Woodhouse Peak here in the Golden Gate Highlands National Park. And this peak is 2,438 meters above sea level. And low down we have the strata cumulus, the stratus, and the cumulus, big building clouds. Often fair weather clouds, but these are growing into storm condition clouds. In the distance, we can see layers of mountain folds, blue-gray with fog banks. Lower down, haze moves towards us. This is big sky country. As we leave these impressive skyscapes behind us, this time we're greeted by a lone wildebeest, also dwarfed by clouds on the flat mountain top. This can only be an African experience. Today I found the colony of a species of stingless bee and here we can see the entrance way into that colony. This feature here is known as a propolis. The shape of it gives away the species of bee that inhabits this hive. Judging by the shape of this one, uh, the species here is known as Trigona apicalis. It's a small species of bee, less than two centimeters across has a little white tip to the end of each wing, as you can see quite often when the bees settle on the mouth of the propolis before scurrying on into the hive. The ones that are hovering just at the entrance of the hive appear to be guards rather than bees that are coming and going. They're staying there for quite a long time uh, just uh, flying a few centimeters in front of the entrance. It's a rough job. Uh, there's a, a few collisions here where bees either coming into the nest just crash straight into them or those that are just uh, rushing to get out come out of the hive there And if you look very carefully, the ones coming into the hive have often got pollen or other food materials stuck to their legs. They have pouches on their knees uh, in which they can uh, put pollen, known as pollen baskets. Once again, you're just left with as many questions as, uh, as you get answers, really. I'd like to know what's inside that uh, soil bank there where they're going in. Presumably there's an excavated chamber in there where they're storing away their food and making cells uh, for the larvae to develop. It is always wonderful to see the sun's first rays touch the waiting earth. And in this hugeness is a tiny creature hard at work. A colony of harvester ants collecting food and nesting material for the coming winter. I track the ants backwards and come to this feinbos shrub from whence they are taking these fluffy parasol type seeds no doubt for nesting material insulation against the coming cold it is a symbiotic relationship this one the ants helping the shrub with seed dispersal 
dropped seeds become new growth. The other half of the colony seems to be preoccupied with a different chore. They are carrying these succulent green seeds, which will no doubt serve as food through the winter. And tracking them backwards, I find this plant. I can only wonder the nature of the collective mind which instructs half the ants to do one chore and the other half another task. Whence the choreography? Watching this trail of worker ants. More than anything, it is the singular effort that holds me in awe. One of nature's impeccable creatures in every sense sculpted into a most remarkable form. The collective intent of the whole colony expressed in each and every individual. There you see the ant on the right sawing through the stem of the selected seed. And back on the shrub, finally, the seed comes loose. And now begins the challenge of getting it to the ground and to the nest. Wind buffeted to the other side, but still hanging on. What a battle. What a world. It is never easy. Not for any species that wishes to survive and sustain in this world of ours. On Dead Tree Island at sunrise, Elephants slowly drifted out from the forests. Bull elephants generally move in groups. An older dominant bull normally leads. And the slightly younger ones tail him. I suppose to have some company would be one reason, but it's more about learning, about having a role model, about mentorship. It's about learning how to be bulls. They were moving into the bull rushes that grow in the permanent waters to feed during the day. This is the first sign that the interior is drying out. <laughs> 